day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. You know when I edited the tape? That scripture, man, you were saying. That scripture was saying is, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He, that scripture said, deliver me from evil. Huh? That, well, let me put that, sir. I'm going to break it down for you. Alan, I wanted you to break it down for me, but I'm going I'm to break it down from my perspective how I read the scripture. Because I'm trying to say as far as us and the body of Christ, because some people don't think we as the body of Christ can do this stuff. But we are saying is, our Father which are in heaven, meaning my source, is Christ, God Almighty, the Holy Spirit, the Godhead. That, he said, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. When I say, when I read that kingdom come, is his way, his will, his purpose in my life and in the life of the world I live in, come. His will be done on earth as it is here to include healing, to include deliverance, to include feeding, power, abundance living. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in earth as it is done in heaven. He said, give, look, I like this part right here, brother Adam, I gotta get the things, the computers in my way. He said, give us this day. And I like that, y'all know I told you one time before. He didn't say give me yesterday, because yesterday is gone. Right, Elder? But he, he, he's not even telling me, he's not telling me to focus on tomorrow. But he said, I want you to deal with the day. That's what he said. Give, give us this day our daily bread. <coughs> substance of life. And Father, I'm concerned, that's not just food, that's spiritual food too. And then the piece that we have to, as we move along, we, as the body of Christ, those listening to this video, my, that thing can't, those people can't see me because I got the computer there. Let me stand up for a second. Give me preaching in here a minute. But I'm moving the camera because the computer was in my way. <laughs> this is where I want to make sure we do his will is in verse 12. Forgive us of our debts. Didn't he do that? He's doing that. He said, give us this day. Okay, you get, but you see it. I'm saying you still, do you, do you not do things that you ask for forgiveness for? You don't, oh, you, oh, everything you do, you don't ask for again? Uh, no, I thank God for forgiving me for yeah, what but, I've done. Yeah, but you're But not. I don't ask for forgiveness because that's like saying he didn't complete his, what he did. Well, I mean, I, Jesus did what he did, and to not accept that is to say he did it. Well, so why would I ask God to forgive me when he has already done just with the balance of that, I'm, I'm with you. I, I want to make sure everybody else understands where you're coming from and where I'm coming from is too, as well. He forgave you of your sin, correct? Yes. Yeah. He's put down here, because this is a, a prayer. He's saying, he's talking about this day. If you have transgressed somebody. Or somebody transgressed you. Or somebody, because that's the other piece on it, right? That's the other piece. Because he, he said, forgive. Yep. Ask for, for if I did something wrong today, Lord, or yesterday, I'm just asking for forgiveness. Let me change my heart. If a cop sit there and beat the hell out of somebody, Lord, I he if he understands he go get forgiveness from God, he can get that forgiveness. Because <coughs> the blood continues to, to it's an everlasting living will that God is doing. But the, the reason behind that, though, El, uh, Brother Alice, I think is more important, like we just said, as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's debt to her, but that's, you know, the other one is written the other way. You supposed to forgive, because he, it's interesting, you know, in that last verse here, 14, for if ye forgive men, you, their trespasses. Your mm -hmm. heavenly Father will also forgive you. Fifteen. 
But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So we have to forgive. That's what he's saying here. I'm just going by the scripture here. I understand that, but to me, like I, this is why I was saying, I believe this has been fulfilled when, with the redemptive work. But it, it, I, I would tell you that you because have, at you, that point, in, in the real world, you have met Christians that don't forgive, right? They have unforgiveness in their heart. Yeah. So that means mm -hmm. that as long as they hold that unforgiveness in their heart, they negate. They're not forgiving. To, to forgive, they, they, they so you're saying if they don't forgive, then God's not forgiving them. So then, what Jesus did doesn't doesn't well, work. That, I mean, that's, that's, I don't I don't, exactly I don't what, understand that. that. Well, that's exactly what Jesus said. There, he says, if you don't forgive men the trespasses against you, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. Right. Okay. So it's like my condition. point being is. Go ahead. This was prior to the redemptive work. But the, the forgiveness, if you unforgiveness is, is a form of hate, correct? It's a form of hate, right? I guess. And the scripture says that he who hate his brother. But if you ain't forgiven him, you must got some hate on him. If you ain't forgiven, he said there's no eternal life of bad as in the person who hates. So then Christ gave it so to you. Then the, the you, blood of Jesus is is made in no offense. Yes, sir. What, what, what the Bible I mean, said. What, what what, what, the Bible says that if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, <coughs> you will have. Ask, you ask what you ask, whatever you ask for, you be given to you. But if you don't abide in me, let's go to fifteen. Let's go. To, let's let's go to it real quick. Jesus said here in John 15, you tell me what that's saying from your perspective there. Because I think that's one of the things we got to talk about being a Christian. Well, what does that say to you? Let's read from 1 to 6 or 1 to 7, please. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. That's what Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, oh. that it may bring forth more fruit. Yes, sir. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You missed, you missed four, did you not? Uh, you I haven't at? even got the four. You got three? Okay, gotcha. Okay, I'll read three again. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Right. Abide in me. Yes. And I in you. Yes. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Come except on. it abide in the vine. Okay. No more can ye except ye abide in me. And, uh -huh. I am the vine. Yes. Ye are the branches. Yes. He that abideth in me, yes. and I in him, yes. the same bringeth forth much fruit. Yes, sir. Without me, ye can do nothing. Yes, sir. If a man abideth not in me, uh -uh. he is cast forth as a branch uh -uh. and is withered uh -huh. and gather them and Man, cast yeah. them into the fire and you know they, and they are burned and they are burned if ye abide in me if and my word abide in you uh -huh. ye shall ask what ye will uh -huh. and it shall be done unto you yes sir herein my father glorified is my herein is my father glorified come on that, that will. ye bear much fruit yes sir so shall ye be my disciples yes sir as the Father hath loved me, yes, so sir. have I loved you. Yes. Continue ye in my love. Yes, sir. If you keep my commandments, oh, yes. ye shall abide in my love. Yes, sir. Even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abideth in his love. Yes, sir. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Yes, sir. This is my commandment. Come on. That ye love one another. Yes, as I have loved you. Yes, sir. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friend, if ye do whatever I command you. So sound like yeah. and, and I like and I like the fact is that that lines up elder with Psalms 91, doesn't it? He who dwells in the secret place of the most yes, high sir. shall yep. abide in the shadows of the Almighty. The Almighty. Yep. I would say okay, the Lord but, is my refuge and my fortune. In other words, 
you, I don't worry, you remember, no man can pluck you out of God's hand. But it doesn't say you can't walk out of it. Okay, but that still doesn't explain what? The fact that all my sins, past, present, and future, the penalty for that has been paid for, and I have yeah. been forgiven. That's real. Yeah, but with the condition he gave you, though, is that you it's must forgive. Body. You must abide in him, and you must forgive. I mean, Christ was very clear on that. You, that's what he's trying to say. If you are a hater, you have no eternal life abided in you. In other words, if you, it, it's almost saying is that if your heart has not abided in him, but that's what's important. The word of God, your heart, you take on the mind of Christ. Remember the Bible is talking about a, a, a progression here, right? From milk to meat. Yeah. Right? There's a progression. There is also a backsliding. That's what the Old Testament is talking about. That you can convert and go back to bondage, go back to sin. That's why he used the children of Israel when they didn't go into the promised land in number 14. When they say that can't go in that promised land, let's go all the way back to Egypt. Those are examples. You have been free. And this, matter of fact, if you go to uh, John 8, let's go to John 8. I do remember that one. Let's go to 8, and I think it's in 32, I believe it is. John 8. And go all the way down. And, 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 and brother, I think that's Blue Brother Addison, Psalm 31, and he's going to let you read all the way down here. But let's, let's just read all the way to uh, from 31 to 47. Okay? I'm going to put it, I'm sorry, I'm moving around so I'm getting you in the center of your screen. 31, and go keep going to 47. I have to move the slides up when I get to it. You want me to read? Yes, sir. Okay. And I, I want you to meditate. As you get revelation, help us out too if you can. Go ahead. Okay. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Uh -huh. Ye shall know the truth, uh -huh. and the truth shall make you free. Yes, sir. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. Uh huh. And were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Mm. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And does that apply to us too? Right now? Yeah. No. And so, so if you commit sin, you're not a servant of sin. No. Okay, keep going. I mean. To, to, to say that, I, I just don't get it because Paul said, you know, those things that I would do, I do. Into my flesh. Right. Yes. So and it's he the, said also, it's God. That's in my members. He also said, you carnally mind or spiritually mind. <coughs> okay. So. Okay. And, and, and I like the fact that the scripture is saying that if you, he's making a condition, even in John, about the, the key word is abiding in him. Yeah. That's the key. I, I do want to make sure that is the key for all Christians is listening on this thing that God is saying, if you don't, you can't, if you don't want to abide in me, you got some issues. Because you, 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 you now move out of the secret place into where the cardinality and the world system is. Now, you can always come back into me. But he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. In other words, we don't want any believer to sit there and say, I have arrived and now I'm going to go do what the hell I want to do. You have to continue to grow. You have to continue to abide in him. His word needs to continue to abide in you. We read his Mark 4. He said that the devil comes to take the word and so where? In your heart. It's critical that we live by the spirit of God, which is the word of God. We have to let it stay there. I'm, and you I'm have just, to abide in it. We, we, and you know, I'm trying to say all of us, not just you. I'm saying all of us have challenges and desires sometimes to out, step, step outside of the secret place. But he's trying to clearly say, y'all need to abide in me. 
because I like that one scripture when he said on that judgment day, some of them said, did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not call it? You see what I'm saying? Is that these are people professing they were doing the will of God, the word of God, saying they are the children of God. But Jesus said, I never knew you. You, so I don't, I don't want any Christians to that say that you know Jesus, but you don't want the word to abide in him. You don't know Jesus, but you want to sin. Jesus said, I want you, you sin, but you got the grace and mercy of me. But if you're not abiding in me, you're going to be cast out and burnt in the fire because you're not in me.